March, the powerful Category 4 hurricane barreling through the Caribbean with 130 mile an hour winds and life threatening flash flooding and mudslides. Thousands fleeing the coastlines, U.S. citizens told to leave. Hundreds of military family members evacuated as the storm tracks north toward the U.S. Donald Trump's taxes, the leaked documents showing he lost nearly a billion dollars in one year are raising big questions. Did Trump avoid paying income tax for nearly two decades? His advisors now calling him a genius. Critics say he's a tax dodger as he ramps up the personal attacks on Hillary Clinton. I don't even think she's loyal to Bill, you want to know the truth. With less than a week to their next debate, Saturday Night Live takes aim at their first showdown. We should be talking about the important issues like Rosie O'Donnell. <laughs> She's a fat loser. Up in flames, two hot air balloons crashing into power lines. Flames seen shooting out of the balloon at one of the biggest shows in the world, with passengers on board, crews racing to cut them free. And breaking overnight, Kim Kardashian robbed at gunpoint. The reality star held up in a Paris mansion by five gunmen pretending to be cops, stealing millions of dollars worth of jewelry. I'm sorry, family emergency, I have to stop the show. Kanye West got the news in front of startled concert goers. The investigation to the terrifying heist this morning. Live in Times Square, this is GMA with Robin Roberts, George Stephanopoulos, and Michael Strahan. And good morning, America. Let's take a look at mm -hmm. that scene in Paris. Police on the scene where Kim Kardashian was robbed at gunpoint by uh, robbers disguised as police. Kanye West got the news right in the middle of the concert here in New York, walked right off the stage. A lot of people there did not know what was I'm going sorry. on. They were pretty angry, but now they hope they understand. They do understand now. We're going to have much more on that coming up. But first, we want to get to that major hurricane. The U.S. State Department advising citizens to evacuate Jamaica, Haiti, and Cuba as Hurricane Matthew approaches with life-threatening floods, winds, and mudslides. ABC's Gio Benitez is on the ground for us in Kingston, Jamaica. Good morning, Gio. Robin, good morning to you. We've been getting those outer bands from Hurricane Matthew, and when those storms roll in, they are strong and they cause some serious flooding. That's exactly the fear here. This morning, roaring winds from the Category 4 hurricane have the Caribbean on high alert. Ripping winds reaching 130 miles per hour overnight. The U.S. military taking action, evacuating nearly 700 military families from Guantanamo Bay, Cuba. The monstrous storm lashing Jamaica's coast, dumping rain, cars pushing through the flooded streets. The first van started rolling in just half an hour ago, and just look, already we've got some serious flooding here. One man capturing this dramatic scene of a water spout off a Jamaican beach. And as the storm sets its course toward Haiti, fears of catastrophic effects. There will be no way for these makeshift tents to survive the punishing winds. More than 50,000 people have been living in the temporary homes since the disastrous earthquake of 2010 that left more than 200,000 dead. The storm could bring up to 40 inches of rainfall to Haiti, triggering mudslides. And this storm has already killed at least one person, a 16-year-old on the island of St. Vincent. George, this really could be one of the strongest storms to hit the Caribbean in years. Yeah, it is a big one. Okay, Gio, thanks very much. And let's get more on where Matthew's headed now. Ginger, going pretty slowly. Very slow. Right now, north at six miles per hour, and that's been the track all weekend. It's been over open ocean water, but now is the urgent time. The next 24 hours, Haiti, Jamaica, and then the next 48 hours, it'll be parts of the Caribbean, including the Bahamas. Let's go ahead and look at this. I want to lay this out. No alerts yet for the United States. There's a reason for that, and I'm going to explain it. Right now, we just see tropical storm watches, hurricane warnings, and hurricane watches that go through eastern Cuba up through the Bahamas. I want to lay out exactly what the track looks like so you can see it at this point. The National Hurricane Center takes it Wednesday into the southeastern Bahamas, Thursday, central Bahamas, and then by Friday. So we're talking almost a week away yet as it parallels the United States. We went ahead and put this on here so you can see it kind of thread through the islands. This is not good because it won't hit the friction of the land and it'll have plenty of energy, a lot of that hot water to go toward us. Now, this is the one that's gonna save us. This is the front that's gonna push and eventually, hopefully, keep it away from, or at least very minimal impact. 
for us. But again, it's Outer Banks by Sunday. That's what I'm looking for. Yeah, but we're thinking about all those on the islands. Absolutely. Yes. That's the mm -hmm. imminent threat. That's right. All right, Ginger, thank you. Now to the race for the White House, 36 days until the election and that October surprise about Donald Trump and his taxes. The New York Times saying they were mailed a document revealing Trump had a $916 million loss in 1995, raising big questions. ABC's Tom Yamas is at Trump Tower for us this morning. Good morning, Tom. Robin, good morning to you. Donald Trump has refused to release his tax returns, citing an audit. But now, one of his returns is public, and he is very upset about this because it's raising new questions. This morning, Donald Trump facing accusations he's a tax dodger. Part of the billionaire's 1995 return, leaked to the New York Times, shows he took nearly a billion-dollar loss following the collapse of his Atlantic City casinos, his airline, and the purchase of New York's Plaza Hotel. The huge loss raising the possibility that while following the law, he hasn't paid federal income tax for nearly two decades. Maybe he doesn't want the American people, all of you watching tonight, to know that he's paid nothing in federal taxes. That makes if me he's smart. Paid Trump's campaign isn't denying the authenticity of the tax return, saying Trump is a highly skilled businessman who has a fiduciary responsibility to his business, his family, and his employees to pay no more tax than legally required. Adding, he has also paid hundreds of millions of dollars in a variety of taxes. In 1994, Trump sounded confident to ABC News while facing a mountain of debt. I had $975 million worth of personal debt, and that's down now to about 115 million, and I'm going to pay that off very quickly. In fact, over the next very short period of time. It took years, but Trump did bounce back. Something some of his allies are using one word to describe. My response is he's a genius. I mean, the reality genius? is absolute genius. There's no one who's shown more genius in in their way to maneuver around the tax code and to rightfully use the laws to do that. But Trump himself has railed against the wealthy taking advantage of tax loopholes possibly the same way he did. I know people that are making a tremendous amount of money and paying virtually no tax, and I think it's unfair. The Clinton campaign seizing on the apparent flip-flop. We talk about the rigged system out there. Donald Trump embodies that. Now, as Trump is dealing with this tax story, the Associated Press is out with an investigation citing former staffers and contestants on The Apprentice accusing Donald Trump of sexual harassment. One producer going on the record saying Trump would wonder out loud which contestants were, quote, tigers in bed. The Trump campaign is denying those accusations. George? Okay, Tom, thanks very much. As Tom said, the Clinton team is pouncing on these tax revelations. Cecilia Vega on the trail with Clinton from the start. She joins us now. Good morning, Cecilia. George, good morning to you. Clinton has said that she's not going to engage Donald Trump in his personal attacks, but these attacks are more personal than ever. Her opponent is now going after her health and her marriage, and it may be a preview of what's to come in the next debate. Donald Trump's newest attack, a dramatic reenactment of Hillary Clinton's near collapse when she was sick with pneumonia. Here's a woman. She's supposed to fight all of these different things, and she can't make it 15 feet to her car. Give me a break. He's going after her mental health, too. She could be crazy. She could actually be crazy. During a weekend rally in the battleground of Pennsylvania, the blistering assault more personal than ever. Trump going after Clinton's marriage, this time not targeting her husband's infidelities, but rather without proof, hers. I don't even think she's loyal to Bill. You want to know the truth. And really, folks, really. Why should she be, right? No comment from Clinton during her Sunday visit to a church in North Carolina. Her campaign calling Trump's latest attacks, quote, particularly unhinged. But could it be a trial run of what's to come during their next debate? The Republican nominee hinting that things could get more personal. The last head-to-head -head now fodder for the opening night of the new season of SNL. He is a bully. Shut up. He started the birther movement. You did. He says climate change is a hoax invented by China. It's pronounced China. He hasn't released his tax returns, which means he's either not that rich, Wrong. not that charitable, Wrong. or he's never paid taxes in his life. Warmer. On her campaign plane, Clinton caught on camera laughing about it with her staff. <laughs> Told about this opening scene. I'm better than ever, let's do this. Clinton saying, 
Oh, that's good. It was pretty good. And this morning, a big endorsement for Hillary Clinton from NBA superstar LeBron James, the Ohio native, writing, we need a president who brings us together and keeps us unified. Clinton campaigns in his hometown of Akron later today. Her team hoping his endorsement, Georgia, in this battleground state pays off big. Yeah, it is a tight state right now. Okay, Cecilia, thanks very much. Let's bring in Matt Dad and John Carl to talk about all this right now. And Matt, let's begin with this tax re revelation in the New York Times over the weekend. You saw Rudy Giuliani with me yesterday saying it's a sign of Trump's genius. Yeah, I, my definition of genius is a little bit different. It would be more like Einstein or Copernicus or Isaac Newton. Those would be genius in this. Calling that genius to me is a little bit like saying Phil Mickelson is a genius for hitting it in the water because he wants to clean his ball. I just, it's an amazing situation to me that the guy base had a billion dollar loss and then took uh, te he took tax consequences from it in order to save himself money. And the problem for, for Donald Trump, one of the problems, uh, John Carl, is that it comes at the end of this week where it started out with a, a debate performance that most observers thought that Hillary Clinton won. He went double down on this attack on Alicia Machado, and then you have these tax revelations, times running out in this campaign. It's a colossal waste of time, a full week wasted when he needs to gain ground on Hillary Clinton. In terms of the tax issue, George, the Clinton campaign will go at that fundamental fairness question of somebody that wealthy not paying taxes or allegedly not paying taxes. But the bigger thing is they want to ridicule him and embarrass him for the size of that business loss, nearly a billion dollars. That's his greatest strength, his brilliance as a businessman. They will uh, hit very hard the fact that he lost so much money in a single year. Yeah, Matthew, Daddy, you saw Hillary Clinton get under Donald Trump's skin at the last debate when, he, when she talked about that gift, the loans from his father when he was starting out in business. We got the vice presidential debate tomorrow night, the next presidential debate on Sunday night. Trickier territory for Donald Trump next Sunday night because it's a town meeting debate. Yeah, I actually think the vice presidential debate could, could be important because it actually, if there is, Mike Pence does well, he, he could figure out a way to stop the bleeding that's happened over the course of the last week and stop it and try to move on to more positive territory. I do think this is going to be a much different dynamic for the presidential debate because you're going to have an audience there. You have to figure out how to relate to them. I actually think it could bring out some of Hillary's strengths more than a stand at the podium debate. And it actually, I'm very curious to see how Donald Trump relates directly with somebody standing right in front of him. Big questions right there. Matt Dowd, John Carl, thanks very much. And that presidential debate Sunday night is right here on ABC. Our Martha Raddatz is one of the moderators. Tomorrow night, I'll be anchoring our coverage of the vice presidential debate with analysis from our whole team. That's also at 9 Eastern. Moving on from politics now to that deadly train crash in New Jersey that killed one person and injured more than 100. This morning, authorities trying to find a way to recover a crucial data recorder. ABC's Eva Pilgrim is on the scene there for us with the latest on the investigation. Good morning, Eva. Good morning, Robin. Crews working around the clock to stabilize this train station so investigators can get into that front car. This as we're hearing from the train's engineer who says he was well rested the morning of the accident. Holy Overnight setbacks in the search for answers about what caused this commuter train to crash into a platform Thursday, killing one person, injuring 114 others. The train's engineer telling officials that while he remembers the train operating properly before the crash, allegedly pulling into the station at 10 miles an hour, there is a portion of time he cannot account for. The engineer says he has no memory of the accident. He remembers waking up on the floor of the cab. This as the investigation is dealt another blow. We have a train that has gone through the station. Officials learning one of the two event recorders on board wasn't working the day of the accident, and they haven't been able to reach the second box or train's camera, both trapped in this mangled mess of wreckage. Right now, it is very dangerous to get in there to see whether there was any application of brakes. This, as ABC News has learned, New Jersey Transit was under an audit by the Federal Railroad Administration, in part because of safety concerns. A five-year investigation finding 183 safety violations, some related to employee drug and alcohol use, and almost $5 million in damage to tracks and equipment. The preliminary drug and alcohol tests for the train's engineer have come back negative. The NTSB is doing further tests. Robin. All right, Eva, thank you.
We're going to go now to Amy with the morning's other top story, starting with rising tensions in L.A. That's right. Protests broke out in South Los Angeles for a second night following the police shooting of a black teenager. A few dozen protesters turned violent, jumping on cars, blocking roads, and vandalizing storefronts during a demonstration against the shooting of 18-year-old Carnell Snell. Police say Snell was armed when he tried to run away after a car chase. A second police shooting in L.A. this weekend also under investigation. Well, a peace deal to end five decades of war has unexpectedly been rejected by voters in Colombia. Critics claim the deal between the government and FARC rebels was too lenient, allowing gang members to avoid prison. 200,000 lives have been lost in that conflict. Well, some frightening moments at a festival in New Mexico when this hot air balloon strayed off course, hitting a power line and sparking a fire. Rescue crews had to eventually cut the basket from the balloon to get the people down safely. 1,200 nearby homes lost power. And a close call at this car show in Houston as a Mustang woo, nearly crashes into that crowd lining the street. Parents, you could see, running to grab their children. And if it was not for that curb right there, you can see dozens of people could have been injured. Well, a family photo like you've never seen before. Take a look at Jimmy. Yep, the 1,400-pound brown bear posing with his adopted parents. He's one of 11 bears at their orphanage in upstate New York. They adopted Jimmy as a cub. They call him their gentle giant. And I, I love what they add in the article. He's never intentionally taken a nibble out of his parents. Intentionally. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Just My kids have. Yeah. <laughs> very, very happy for the family. Yes. Thanks, Thanks Amy. Amy. We're going to move on now to that bad behavior at the Ryder Cup. Big win for Team America, but the team's rowdy fans marred the victory with their heckling. Roy McElroy even asked one rude spectator to be removed. There it is right there. Jesse's here with the story. Hey, Jesse. Hey, good morning, George. You're right. The pomp, pageantry, and the golf course were all at center stage at the 41st Ryder Cup, but it's the American fans who wound up on the hot seat. And that's going to be good enough. For the first time in almost a decade, the U.S. brought home the Ryder Cup. And the United States will begin a celebration that will ring into the night and beyond. The European team disappointed by the outcome, but taking issue with U.S. fans for loudly heckling them at every turn. Gary just got heckled and had to back off the putt, was not happy. You can't make 12! I think that 85% of the people are great, but that 15% that is really bad, it makes them look bad. America! The rowdy fans here at the Hazeltine Golf Club in Minnesota creating an atmosphere more reminiscent of Happy Gilmore. You suck. Why don't you shut the hell up? Or Caddyshack. This is your miss, miss. One U.S. fan had Irish ace Rory McIlroy seeing red on the green. You suck, America! This clash caught on camera after a spectator yelled vulgarities at McIlroy. The golfer confronting him before asking security to kick him out. Get him out. The confrontation seemed to fire up the third-ranked golfer in the world. And it wasn't enough to give Europe the win. But afterwards, Roy said European fans should not retaliate at the 2018 Ryder Cup. We also spotted a famous face blending right into the raucous crowd chanting USA. Take a closer look here, guys. See that guy there in the camo hat? That's Bill Murray. What? Yeah, the Caddyshack star <laughs> getting the crowd fired up into a frenzy chanting America. And then the other side would yell America back at him. Mm, that's fine, but the rest were jerks. What was that about? Yeah, you know, you give fans beer at 7.30 in the morning yeah. on the golf course, and they're generally going to say things they don't mean by 5.30 in the afternoon, and that was the mm, problem. Oh, wow. Let's go back to Ginger. Uh -huh. Hill in California. This is part of that trough that's going to come through and potentially steer Hurricane Matthew. We'll be talking more about that. First, those select cities brought to you by Liberty Mutual Insurance. You both have a perfect driving record. Perfect. No tickets, no accidents. That is until one of you clips a food truck ruining your perfect record. Yeah. Now, you would think your insurance company would cut you some slack, right? No. Your insurance rates go through the roof. Your perfect record doesn't get you anything. Anything. Perfect. For drivers with accident forgiveness, Liberty Mutual won't raise your rates due to your first accident. Liberty stands with you. Liberty Mutual Insurance. 
Well, today is looking like the brightest day out of the work week. The high today, 76. We start out with some morning clouds and fog, but by lunchtime today, it will feel nice. 73 for a temperature, and we continue to monitor this major hurricane. It is Matthew. It's through uh, eastern uh, side of uh, Cuba today, and then by the time we get to the end of the week and weekend, somewhere off the east coast, so could be impacts here with maybe rain and wind right now. Way too early to tell, but most of this week cloudy around 70. And coming up here on GMA, Kim Kardashian in Paris for Fashion Week is robbed at gunpoint. Millions of dollars worth of jewelry stolen. Kanye West cut his concert short saying he had to leave.